Okay, I'm going to ask you to kind of change your mind step. Uh, there's been a lot of podium space over the years, over the last 10, 15 years, with a lot of amazing drugs that uh, Dr. Leonardi has uh, told you about. But today I'm going to talk about innovations in topical treatments, and I think that it's an area that's been forgotten for quite a while. Um, speaker, consultant, prior, and private investigator for a number of different companies. My objectives today are to basically identify the new antipsoriotic topicals, review a little bit of their efficacy and their safety of these new products. Uh, many of us aren't old enough, Greg is, of course, and maybe I am, but uh, we don't go back to arsenic, but these are all the sort of roadmap, if you would, arsenic, uh, coal tar, coal tar is still used a bit, uh, anthranol, dithranol, yeah. really can't get it in Canada, except for specialty uh, pharmacies for some of our older patients, uh, topical vitamin D analogs. Topical steroids really basically since 1952 have been more or less the mainstay for topical treatment for psoriasis. How about we've had keratolytics and then some of these fixed combinations where we've had basic uh, calcipotriol with a topical steroid. So I think it's been a neglected area and I think it's an important area because the majority of our psoriatic patients are people that are amenable possibly to topical therapy. Many patients are more hesitant to t go on the systemic therapies. Uh, many of them see the ads on the uh, television and go, yeah, I kind of want this, uh, no, but maybe I don't because I hear all those other things that might uh, cause problems by taking a systemic therapy. And biologics themselves may not get complete uh, clearance. So they may end up giving you a PASI 75, PASI 90, uh, but we're trying to drive to 100 and we've got a lot of biologics that do get there but there's still people that I see that have stubborn plaques, say, on their legs or maybe their elbows. So do we need new topicals for psoriasis? I say absolutely, because there's people that I see that come in sometimes for other things, and they go, oh, by the way, I've got these plaques over my elbows, I've got plaques over my uh, knees, and they don't have anything else. They're there for some other reason. They go, Dr. Lynn, can you give me something for this? So I think there's a need for this in the marketplace. So do we need another topical? Yes. This comes from the 2018 National Psoriasis Foundation, and only 14% of people were very satisfied or extremely satisfied with their treatments. 75% noted that there was a lack of efficacy was the reason why. And those that are on a biologic, 54% that they would have continued on their topical if it was more effective. And I'm here to tell you that we're now in an era of never, number of newer therapies in this field that are going to be very beneficial. This is a, a Chuck Lind uh, thing. What do I want for my ideal topical? High efficacy, it's gotta be safe, non-irritating, cosmetically ir elegant, non-steroid. Uh, people have been treated and treated with steroids. Many of them have uh, side effects from the strii, thin skin, et cetera. And you wanna be able to use it long-term. You don't want to, uh, at least in Canada, the pharmacist often tells them, you know, the worst thing they could ever use is a topical steroid. Uh, they're told basically, you, you know, you can't use this more than two or three weeks. Uh, it's gonna, you know, your skin's gonna fall off. Meanwhile, uh, cyclosporin or uh, cyclophosphamide, oh, here's your cyclosporin and your, they're unusual that way. Uh, and you wanna be able to use the same product on multiple sites, just makes it easier. I mean, uh, I trained under a uh, dermatologist who was very meticulous, but she, gave people like 12 different things at once. <laughs> and it often left the resident to basically, well, you tell them where they're gonna use all those things. And that took half an hour, which uh, if you can basically have one product that can do all these areas, I think that's gonna be easier for us to prescribe. So the active pipeline, uh, I picked uh, four different um, molecules here. Uh, fixed combination products, um, the halbetazole and terazeratine uh, lotion. Uh, the calcipotriol and betamethasone dipropionate uh, cream, and two are newer molecules. So the fifth combination ones are already out in the market in uh, Europe and the United States. We don't have the MC2 uh, product, uh, but I think it's going to come. But the two new molecules are something that I think we need to know more about particularly. So going back, the fixed combination, calcipotriol and betamethasone dipropionate lotion. Uh, this was a design Basically that you ran it in over from day zero to week eight, 
uh, looked at the effect and then re-randomized those people into success and no success, and then it went into a long-term extension. I think the important point here, by combining a t potent topical steroid with the halbetazole, was able to eliminate the potential for atrophy. And in the study, less than 1% of people got any atrophy. So potent steroid still being used, but by using the halbetazole. The other thing is that this was put into a very special um, uh, base that allowed you to get this particular lotion to a thing. And there are some local skin reactions over time that can develop, but fairly few. So the prime endpoint here, treatment success at week eight, remember it's week eight, two great improvement from baseline and clear and almost clear. And this is how these uh, uh, topicals are being put up against for the FDA. Pretty high bar, actually. But this is the same thing that for acne studies, et cetera. And you can see there, basically, at uh, week eight, 36% were either two grades up or clear or almost clear. And then, again, similarly, the, there were two mirroring studies. And again, the other study gave 45%. So quite high benefit. What I also want to just point out, you see the baseline. You can see you know, dermatologists like pictures. This is one that's uh, a picture. Week eight. And at week eight, basically, they came off the drug, and they were followed then to week 12. And you can see that a number of people got a quotation marks, remittative effect with this particular medication. So quite a benefit. So the fixed combination, calcipatriene and betamethasone. And again, this is a very difficult one. And they, uh, I believe that Leo, when they were making the, uh, I think you call it Taclinex in the United States, uh, spent many years, because one's acidic and one is uh, basic. And they have a lot of difficulty putting that in together. And they were able to put it into an ointment and subsequently into a gel. But this particular company, again, Danish, came up with a special pad technology. And this is just uh, basically, I won't go into this uh, extensively, but they came up with a technology that allowed them to put those two molecules together and put it into a cream. And again, that goes back to what do our patients want and what does uh, Chuck Lind want? He wants somebody that has an elegant uh, production of a molecule that is cosmetically acceptable and patients want to use it. And you can use a cream in more than just uh, an ointment where Anointment, you can't put it on all the areas. You don't put it on to uh, scalp very easily. But this can go into the scalp if you need to. <coughs> there were two, uh, this is a head-to-head -head, uh, cream trial versus their competitor. Uh, comparator providing robust data across disease severities. So you can see there basically, again, the vehicle against the cream versus the uh, uh, Taclinex uh, topical suspension and looking at the thing. And this was a kind of moderate to severe population. And you can see in terms of the better efficacy against the Taclinex, and again, that's the um, calcipatriene and uh, the uh, steroid mixture. Uh, this one, again, in the cream base, you can see achieves very high uh, PGA uh, and also uh, treatment success. And as I mentioned, again, the treatment success, two grades, and also clear, almost clear. Again, fast onset, and it was, seems to be uh, faster onset than, and decreasing in itching and decreasing in sort of parameters than, again, the competitor product. So again, innovation, the base, makes a difference in able to combine these products, producing something that we want also in terms of cream. So there were no SAAs in the study, few adverse events, and again, about 1% application irritation. And again, mild things. Basically, the frequency was the same as vehicle. So I just, again, showing a picture. So because it's a cream base, it can actually be put into hairier areas. It can be put onto your elbows, knees, other areas, trunk, without problems. So I'm moving on to kind of new molecules. Uh, to pin off, again, cream, 1%. It's by a company called Dermavant, based here in the States. And again, it's a topical small molecule that directly binds and activates AHR, transcription factor. And you can see there basically 
how the mechanism of action, producing this complex, interacting with the DNA and modulating gene expression. The major studies were basically the soaring phase three program. You see the trial design, there was soaring one, soaring two, because as you know, for the European uh, um, health agencies, they need two comparable studies to be uh, looked at. And again, looking at these particular studies, and then they went into what's called soaring three, again, the long-term extension. So basically, I'm just uh, gonna go over this. This uh, talk was to be kind of on a high level if you want, but you see, again, this is at week 12. So when you look at uh, data and everything else, uh, it's important to recognize when that endpoint was. But again, it was the uh, PGA01, clear, almost clear, and again, two grade improvement, and it's at week 12. And you can see basically, again, very high numbers in terms of the success with this big drug. And I can, again, you can see that picture. I think it's quite remarkable. This is a patient that's had this for many, many years, uh, goes on this drugs, and has had a number of other treatments previously. And within that time period, week 12, you can see even by week four, gets quite a good result, but certainly by week 12 is basically clear. It's also a drug that's been seen that it puts people into a somewhat of remission. So obviously, I think uh, patho um, uh, in terms of pathology and looking at different things, this is probably affecting your T memory cells to be able to do that. I don't think they have any good data in surrounding that, but I think that's something that would be beneficial to understand why you can drive some of these people into, a, again, a state where you get some remission. And again, you can see the results here, again, in terms of the um, PASI 75, uh, the greater than four point improvement in terms of the NRS, and that's, again, beneficial over placebo. And again, I just show a, a picture here. You can see this person's chest. You can see the, basically, the changes that occur again. And basically, again, by this particular picture, again, week eight, they basically pretty much cleared there. And by certainly by week 12, again, almost completely cleared. And I think most of our patients would be extremely happy with this. And again, this is the long-term extension showing that this and goes on and you get many people that continue to be clear or almost clear or to great improvement. And again, showing here the durability of this response over that uh, year's uh, thing. Again, a durable response. And this is what we talk about in our biologics. We want a drug that works well and also causes a durable response. And again, remember this is not a steroid and you can use it on a long-term basis without having problems in terms of the skin. And I think all of us talk about in terms of uh, safety. Uh, this one particularly causes sometimes a little bit of uh, folliculitis. We call it folliculitis because we're not quite certain what it is. There can be some irritation around the area of the plaque that it's uh, being treated. Uh, for the most part, that actually goes away. Uh, sometimes it goes away with continued application. Uh, sometimes you actually have to stop the drug for a few days but again, uh, pretty clean otherwise in terms of other problems, none. And again, this is just a long-term extension showing some pictures. Again, clear basically at uh, week 12 or almost clear, and then continuing over that uh, year's time when it is essentially almost clear. Again, another new molecule, rofilamast by Arcutis. Uh, basically, this is a phosphodiesterase 4 inhibitor. And you go, well, so a premolas works for, uh, systemically for some of our patients. Uh, there was attempts to uh, look at this previously, topically. Uh, didn't work very well. This one is quotation marks, quotation marks, again, very selective. Has a much more potency in terms of the phosphodiesterase 4 inhibitor. And again, under investigation, once daily, non-steroidal for psoriasis and also now for atopic dermatitis. This was the Dermis 1 and 2 trials, looking at this. Again, similar sort of things. They took it up to 20% BSA. Some of these now with these topicals have higher than just the 10%. And many of us believe at 10%, we should be treating them with systemics, such as a biologic. 
but many of these have been shown to be beneficial in those that have higher BSA and higher PASIs. And this is just in terms of the endpoints again. And again, high completion rates. And that, for me, I do a lot of clinical trials. If your patients stay in the study, that means that it's a pretty darn good uh, molecule and very little in terms of lack of efficacy. So lack of efficacy, as you can see, 0.9%. And AEs, essentially 1%. And this basically, again, showed uh, rates of the Dermis-1 of 42.4 versus the placebo of 6.1, and the other one, 37.5. And the percentage of the patients achieving PASI 75 by week 8, again, this was week 8 for this particular study, uh, was 41.6 and 39%. And again, we talk about now in these studies PASI 90. So it took us a long time. I've done a lot of studies, and Craig uh, showed all those different uh, molecules over the years, and we went, woo, we got PASI 50. Remember those? <laughs> and that's what uh, Lefacep basically, woo, we got 50%. Uh, we were somewhat happy because we were doing something and helping them more than sometimes their methotrexate or other things. Then we got to PASI 75, and I think the standard now, uh, many of the studies actually, the goal for the study is PASI 100 or certainly PASI 90. And we're now starting to talk about PASI 90 in terms of clinical studies with topicals. Remember, it's lesser body surface area and probably not as severe in, in terms of what's taken into the study. And again, side effects, basically none. I mean, this is background noise you're seeing with these uh, topicals, as you would pretty much expect. So in conclusion, topical ter therapies are a mainstay, and this is, uh, for the most part, a lot of our patients, that's what they want. Uh, obviously, if they've got 20 or 30 percent body surface area, they're willing to go for a systemic but they have sort of 3%, 5% of body surface area, they're wishing to have topical things, and I think we're going to be able to deliver these over the next years. And again, a lot of my patients still, that we are trying to achieve PASI 90, PASI 100 within the biological ones, they still have residual areas that they would like to have clear. So they're in the pipeline, they're safe, they're effective and highly effective, and improve the quality of life for those affected with psoriasis. And thank you for listening. I guess I have to go give another lecture. So are there questions that anyone would like to ask? I, I have one. Sure, go ahead. Um, the, I thought it was interesting, the halobetazole um, calcipit trial compound versus Taclinex, head-to-head -head with Taclinex. And you showed it was better than Taclinex, right? Yep. So do you, is it, can you say it was due to the vehicle or were the steroid potencies exactly the same and were the vitamin D analog potency the same? Because you did emphasize that it was a vehicle um, discovery. Yeah. So what do you think? Um, the company's uh, view on this is basically because of the, um, the vehicle, you've got more uh, availability of your both the, uh, the uh, halbetazole and also the... Okay. So. That's, that's their field. I, I think it's probably true. You better vehicle. I think all of us know uh, that if you have a vehicle that's uh, better, better absorption, you're going to get uh, better results usually.